And while maize left no fossils in the traditional sense, it did leave chemical fingerprints. The earliest traces show up not as bones or leaves, but as microscopic silica bodies called phytoliths, which are tiny glass signatures embedded in stone tools. At Shiawatosla Shelter, researchers uncovered these maize phytoliths dating back nearly 8,700 years, the moment when people first began reshaping wild grass into something edible. Genetic analysis tells the rest. All modern corn descends from a single domestication event, one choice, one community, and one persistent experiment that transformed Teosinte's brittle spikelets into something soft, sweet, and dependent. By 7,000 years ago, we started to see that transformation written in stone and in bone. At Gila Nankit's cave, archaeologists uncovered small early cobs with fused kernels, clear signs that farmers had already bred Teosinte into something recognizably maze-like. A few hundred miles northeast in the Tehuacan Valley, layers of husk, pollen, and carbonized kernels show continuous cultivation stretching across millennia. Even the people themselves bear witness. Isotopic analysis of ancient skeletons from central Mexico revealed diets that were up to 70% maize, proof that the grass had become the caloric backbone of civilization. And that dependence didn't happen by accident. Sometime around 4,000 years ago, lowland and highland varieties began to hybridize, merging traits for drought resistance, size, and sweetness. The result was a plant that could flourish almost anywhere, from tropical riverbeds to arid mesas. For the Olmec, the Maya, and later the Aztec, maize wasn't just a crop, it was material of life itself. In the Popol Vuh, which is the Mayan book of creation, humans are molded from maize dough by the gods, yellow corn for flesh, white for bone. So, yeah. To them, we literally are what we eat. Through centuries of patient selection, what began as a brittle grass became a biological marvel. Teosinte's tiny finger-length cobs widened and lengthened into the lush, multi-road form we recognize today. A wild plant that had once been self-sustaining and scattered its seeds into the wind had evolved into something that couldn't survive without us. And that's the strange paradox of corn, a triumph of human ingenuity that also proves how symbiotic we've become with the things we eat. 